Now I am a web designer first and foremost, but I'm also a Webflow expert, but I must admit that when Webflow released the custom CSS property recently, I was a little bit stumped. So what I wanna do in this video is go over five custom CSS properties that I've found that have helped me a bunch and I think are gonna help you guys as well. So let's stop yappering and get into it. So the first one is gonna be this trick that I recently learned thanks to my Twitter buddies. So if we have a super complex shadow like this one where we have five different layers of shadows and they're all very different, but we wanna be able to equally translate over to Webflow, how do we do that without pulling each of my hair strands out of my head. So the easy way to do this is if we go into the dev mode right here, we'll see that box shadow has its own CSS line right there. So if we triple click on this and just select all of it, copy right there, we can actually go into our hover state here on this card feature, scroll all the way down, and we can then delete this one here. But we can actually paste it right there. And we'll see that when we hover over it, we'll get that exact same drop shadow that we have in Figma. So it's an incredibly useful way to convert complex shadows from Figma into Webflow. Now, I didn't know about this. Maybe you guys did, I don't know. But anyways, on to the next one. Now, the next one is gonna involve our cursors. So if we take a look at above the custom properties panel here, cursor, we have a lot of different options, but there's no very simple way of adding your own cursor unless you have an image and then you track that cursor with the interactions and you make sure that it works every time and if you click and there's something complete disaster. So the easiest way that I found is if we get this cursor text that I'm gonna give you guys in the description or the pinned comment, we paste it directly into here and then we grab the URL as well, paste that there. And if we go ahead and publish this, we'll see that our cursor has been converted into this smiley face. Now the way that you would change this smiley face to be whatever else you wanted it to be would be to change the URL of this actual asset. Now, the next one is gonna be another super practical one. So if we go ahead and X out of this and I add in a super long heading, or first of all, add in a div, we'll make it about maybe 15 REMs, center that guy. Height can be 15 REM as well, center him as well. I'm gonna name it container for now, container square. And then we're gonna add in a paragraph here. So this paragraph, I'm gonna make it maybe about that long. So we'll see that with this paragraph here, we have a piece of text, but this text isn't necessarily nice to look at because this last line is kind of sitting on itself. So how could we change this paragraph to make it nice just as we would do if we had something like Figma, where maybe we could have a piece of text here. And if we have this piece of text, we can then say, okay, let's make it about just like that, make it nice and centered. Well, the easiest way is to use this text wrap balance code that I found that helps me a lot. So under cursor here, we can actually delete the cursor just for now, go into body again, and just, I'm just gonna get rid of this for now, just so we can play around with the other stuff. So I'm just gonna go into the paragraph here and type in text wrap, and next to the wrap, I'm gonna put in balance. So what balance is gonna do is make sure that any text that we add here is gonna be balanced so that it's visually appealing to look at. Now, an example of this is if I go into my freelance mastery landing page here, we'll see that I have used this quite a lot. So for example, this H1, we'll see that if we double click into it, something is changing here. So if we add in a bunch of random words, we'll see that it'll automatically make it nice and balanced so it's easy to read for the user. Now in this case, I'm just gonna undo all of that so I don't ruin what I've worked on for a long time here, but let's see. So we can see that it's automatically just gonna always be wrapping it to the very best possible scenario. Next up, we need the square again. I'm gonna add in a form block, but then we're gonna add in the select. Now, if you guys have ever used the select in Webflow before, you'll know that it is a little bit of a pain to use because we cannot get rid of this image here or this, this drop down without a little bit of custom code. Well, I found that this is gonna be one of the easiest ways that we can get rid of this little drop down here. So again, under custom properties, we're gonna go into add and then appearance and type in none. So what that does is it, number one, it gets rid of that arrow and it also gets rid of some margin or padding that we had on that left side there. So now with this, we can go ahead and add in any image that we need. So for example, I'm just going to add in this logo for now, but we can see that it's quite easy just to add in our own arrow if we needed to make sure that it's spaced as we wanted it to. It doesn't need to be anything that we don't want it to be, right? That's the whole point with Webflow and it kind of doesn't really make sense that we didn't even have that option before. But anyways, 
Appearance, none. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and move on to the very last one here, but not the very least. Now in Webflow, you can change pretty much anything you need in terms of CSS, in terms of HTML. You can absolutely do a lot of things, but one of the things that is kind of limiting is these forms. Now, inside of these placeholders, you can change in the color of the placeholder itself. You can change the color of the actual text that gets written, the color of the outline, the color of absolutely everything. But the one thing that I have struggled to find is the color of the line that blinks when you type something in. That thing right there, but I've found it. If we want to change that, we have to type in caret color and then type in any color that you want. So in this case, I'm gonna change it to orange and we can see that now, finally, we can change the color of that caret. Now, how important is that to the overall world of Webflow and design? Not really, but there's a lot of people that have every single thing in their Webflow website designed to the T, including the placeholder of the text, the inputs, the absolute angle of the mart, everything. So why can't we, or why couldn't we, go ahead and change the color of that until now? So here we can type in anything that we need, but here I'm gonna type in blue, so we can see what that looks like. So yeah. I don't know, it's a small, very, very small thing, but a lot of these custom properties will be quite small and these small changes might not affect the entire look and feel of your site, but it's a welcomed change to just make sure that your site feels that much more exactly how you want it to be, right? So anyways, if you guys enjoy this video, if you guys wanna use any of these custom CSS properties that I talked about in the video, I'm gonna leave a link to them in the description and also the pinned comment. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.